Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 7 Commitment by Don Crow. Luke 14, verses 25 to 26. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, Luke 14.25 At this time in Jesus' ministry, there were multitudes of people who followed Jesus. The English language does not bring this out, but in the Greek language, this is an imperfect tense. This means that at this time, the great multitudes began to repeatedly and continuously follow Jesus. Perhaps it was because of his miracles or because he fed them. We don't know the exact reason, but great multitudes were following him. It was at this time that Jesus turned and deliberately said something which appears to have caused many people to turn and follow him no more. If anyone comes to me, that means wants to go with me, wants to accompany me, wants to follow me, this is the requirement, and does not hate his father and mother wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. As I looked at that scripture, I thought, Lord, you can't mean that. What does the word hate mean? It probably means to love less or something like that. As I began to study, however, I discovered that the word literally means hate. Jesus used the strongest possible words to emphasize a point. He said, unless you hate your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, even your own life, you can't be his disciple. I want to ask you something. What is the closest relationship you will ever have on this earth? It's your mother and father or your spouse and children. What happens if your wife turns against you and divorces you, or your mother and father die? Who will stick with you then? It will be your brothers and your sisters. Jesus said, unless you hate them, you can't be his disciple. What is he saying? Jesus is talking about the closest relationships we will ever have. He is asking for a commitment from you a commitment in which he is preeminent. He wants to be number one in your life. He is going to compare his relationship with you to the closest relationships you have on earth. Hate is a metaphor, a word of comparison. And Jesus is saying, my relationship with you is so important that I want it to be above all earthly things. There is one person you love more than your wife, your children, your mother, your father, or your sisters and brothers. Do you know who that is? It is not God, it is you. You love yourself more than you love your closest relationships. Why do marriages break up? Why do people divorce? Because they love themselves more than they love their spouse. You're not doing it like I want you to, so I'm getting rid of you. Jesus said, there is one relationship that I want to be number one above. It's your own selfish life. This is true discipleship. He is not talking about a no-cost discipleship. He is asking us to follow him. He is asking to be number one in our lives. Let us now take this opportunity 
to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Luke 9 verses 57 to 62. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Question. What does this passage teach us about the level of commitment toward following Jesus? Answer. Absolute surrender. We read Luke 8 verses 13 to 14. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Question. Why do some people seem to fall away or turn away from the Christian faith? Answer. They have never put down a root system in the Word of God. The cares, riches and pleasures of this life take them away. We read Ezekiel 16 verse 8. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed, your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you, and you became mine, says the Lord God. Question. God uses the illustration of marriage to describe a relationship with his people. Whose possession does one become in this relationship? Answer. God's. We read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Question. Who do you belong to? Answer. God. We read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Question. Who does your body and your spirit belong to? Answer. God. We read James 4 verse 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Question. Can you commit spiritual adultery against God? Answer. Yes. We read Romans 1 verse 25. 
who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. Question. What would constitute spiritual adultery in God's eyes? Answer. A heart that is turned away from Him to idols, things that you have made more important than God. We read John 2, 23-25. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them, because he knew all men, and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Question. What can we learn about commitment and faith from these verses? Answer. That Jesus wants all of our hearts a total commitment. We read Luke 14 verses 28 to 30. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Question. Have you counted the cost to follow Jesus? Do you want to follow him? Answer. Yes. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson. <laughs>